Hi, I'm Chris Maddock, designer of the Harmony House. Hi, Bob Douglas here again. Today I'd like to talk about a relatively unknown term used in the construction industry and not always found on every residential property. The term is arrow cap, and as it is used in a Harmony House, it refers to an inverted pyramid that is located at the top of the wind tower in the center of the roof. The purpose of the arrow cap is to facilitate natural passive ventilation of the home particularly in the summer months. How it works is that when the wind blows over the wind tower, the air running under the aero cap must travel a greater distance than the air running over the top. This creates a negative pressure or suction at the top of the wind tower, causing it to act like a bathroom fan, drawing the air out of the house through the skylights when they're in the open position. This aero cap also has an added benefit of acting as a reflector in the winter, bouncing low angled winter sunlight into the center of the home through these large skylights. Another terrific passive design feature of this home. We're back at the Harmony House today and uh, as you can see work has progressed quite a bit. And uh, today I'm uh, here with Corey from JRS Engineering and we're going to be going through looking mainly at the building envelope features of the house. Uh, the roof, the wall, things we've done to protect the house from weather. I'm gonna go up and have a look at the membrane that was just placed in the, the wind tower here. We were, uh, I'm basically looking at the roof membrane they placed up here. Uh, they had to, of course, get it all sloped to these two drains, which is now, like, this will be all enclosed as the wind tower, but open for, to allow wind to get in, and then the skylights going in here to allow the uh, air to escape through stack effect. Uh, so I'm just checking the, the membrane, the laps and the seams, making sure that it's all well put, put down. This is actually the roof, of course, over the living space. We want to make sure it's done well. So you're just looking for a good bleed out. You're looking for anything that might look a little bit loose or not well adhered. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty good. Um, I was also looking again to, to see sloping. You can see the sloping towards the drain. Since it is sort of an enclosed space, you want to make sure you get good drainage. Difficult to get up here and, and clean it. So looks good. Insulating the building's envelope to as high a level as possible helps to reduce the energy needed to heat the home. When properly installed, the insulation may last the life of the home. So while it needs no maintenance and costs nothing to operate, insulation quietly works in the background to reduce your heating and cooling costs. A high insulating value is one of the best passive strategies for saving energy in your home. Remember, passive is green. So, in order to be a net zero energy house, we need very highly insulated walls, roofs, and floors. And uh, the way we're achieving a very high insulation level in this wall assembly is by using three different insulations. One of the concerns that we have about a wall assembly of this type is because it's so highly insulated, there are concerns that there will be moisture accumulation within the wall assembly and particularly in the wall sheathing itself. So, uh, to deal with that issue, we first did some computer modeling. The only potential problem is in the north wall, where we see a, a, a moisture accumulation in the sheathing. But why don't you follow me over to the north wall and we'll take a look at what we're doing over there. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the north wall, which happens to be the uh, in the kitchen, and uh, as well as the two by six framing, we've also got two by four framing on the inside. This is to accommodate all the services, all the plumbing and uh, the wiring and so on that occurs behind the kitchen cabinets. So in the north wall, what we've done is we've gone with a preservative treated plywood because the computer modeling showed uh, potential for some moisture accumulation in the sheathing. Again, because the wall is so highly insulated, there's very little heat loss from the inside that would tend to dry out the sheathing normally. So in this case, we're, uh, we're going with a preservative treated uh, material. We're also putting uh, sensors in the wall. These are wireless sensors to check the temperature, the relative humidity, and the moisture content of the wood, just to be, uh, just to be sure that our computer model is actually predicting uh, the correct uh, situation inside the wall assembly. So these little sensors are, are wireless. They will communicate with an internet gateway. And from there, I can go in on the web and look at the temperature profile through the wall, the relative humidity, and the moisture content of the wood in the wall assembly. So to install it, we just take it and place it in the wall. and screw in the screws. I'm going to just go on and install the rest of the sensors in the wall assembly here and uh, come, if you can come back in about 30 minutes I can show you what it'll look like and we'll reinstall the foam. We have the sensors installed in the wall. We've got one in the center of the stud bay uh, on the bottom plate. We've got one in the corner on the bottom plate and we've got one uh, mid stud height at one side. Now on the outside what we showed you earlier was the uh, other sensor which is uh, already uh, connected to the sheathing there. As we've done here, I've cut out this larger panel. This larger panel I've cut out a section of the foam here to accommodate the sensor. Now this panel actually slips up behind the rim joist. We've actually framed this a bit differently here so we could get full insulation carrying up past the end of the rim joist at the top of the stud cavity. So that's the reason this piece of foam has to actually go in at an angle here and get slipped up into the stud cavity. So now we've reinstalled the foam, the sensors are installed and we're ready to go. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm from Crown Roofing Architectural Division in uh, Richmond, BC. Uh, just putting together the water diverter up at the top of this slope here uh, for this metal complete this metal roofing off today. Just uh, getting up here, just making sure this uh, diverter up in here fits properly. Not an easy place to get to, but uh, not a, there's all these little areas on all sorts of roofing that it's just tough to get at. Okay, looks pretty good. Does that, does that tie back need to be underneath it? No, it'll be a little shingle on top of it. They're gonna have to do a little bit of work here because they got here before me and put the tie back on here. So they'll just, have to, they'll just have to put another strip over top of it so it get your proper watershed. So it's all good to go now. I just have to complete this. I just put a four inch flange around here, and then they lap onto it again with their, with their paper membrane. Okay. Oh. <sighs> then uh, I'm going to start over here again and uh, complete the end of this boot where it ties into here. Bit of a tricky piece, a little, bunch of angles I've got to measure. We're going to put a standing seam on this side to divert water. And then just tie this in, makes a lot of fancy cuts and make her look good as well as be functional. The S-Lock is a uh, shop manufactured flat seam that we create in our shop. It's when we fold the metal back on itself tw twice, basically creating essentially what looks like an S out of the metal. And then the next piece of metal, next cap, you can slide into it, which creates a hidden, hidden seam fastener. You can fasten the underside of the S-lock and then the, the other piece slides into it. Actually, right behind you there is an example of it. 
this this one has the s-lock on it you put it on first and then you slide this one into it so you have a you have a hidden hidden seam fastener and a standing seam not a good example of it around here yet but i have a small one right here this is where I, this is where i've started this is three quarters of an inch high I'm gonna have this one come down and, and level off, and I'm gonna have another piece that's an inch and a half high. It will bend over top of it, and then the corners will bend around like that, the, the other way, and which will create your fastener as well as keep the water out. Oh, that's the standing seat, that's the standing seat yes. So now I just gotta slide it in. The trick is to slide it in one side, get her in, give it a little love tap. A little tighter than I'd like, but tighter the fit, the better it is in the long run. And all the little scratches we always touch up with the custom mixed paint to match this roof exactly. Let's cut out this little piece here. A lot of different tools in the trade, so better tools you have, better job you can provide for the customer. And this is a small example of a standing seam. And then we will put a caulking bead around there to keep anything else, to keep any other water out of it. Well, that's that. I'm just gonna put one small exposed fastener in there, pop rivet, and we'll paint it so it's hidden. Um, and uh, that's it for that side, and on to the other side. Uh, today we should be done probably around three o'clock today. We'll uh, we'll clean up our clean up our space, do any touch up, any cleaning that we have to do, and uh, that'll be it. Another roof by Crown Roofing.